Greetings and welcome to the Dream Syndicate. In today's video, we're getting up to some art doll repair as we fix this devil art doll. Sometimes bad things happen to, well, I won't say he's a good devil, but he's a devil. This is a character I made for a gallery show some years ago, and his name is Diavolo Malvolo. This art doll was inspired by Niccolo Paganini, a classical musician who allegedly sold his soul to the devil for his incredible musical talents. He would play up this persona by wearing deep red suits. Just get a look at these deep cracks. That ear is just going to come right off, so may as well help it along. The character's name, Diavolo Malvolo, Diavolo comes from Italian and it's literally the word for devil, and Malvolo? I just thought it seemed cool, it sounded cool, and also there's a Shakespeare character with a similar name, but I don't think I knew that at the time. What I've been doing is kneading plumber's epoxy and then working it into these cracks, uh, gently using tools that I think are going to dispose of like scraps of wire, because otherwise the plumber's epoxy will get on it and set, and then the tool would get ruined. As I go, I'm trying to create a smooth transition between the clay that's already there and the bits of plumber's epoxy that I'm adding. Other things that you could use for this sort of repair, there's wood filler that's manufactured that you could use in a similar way. And for really small spots, either just little bits of just regular two-part epoxy, or even acrylic matte medium sometimes work for really small crevices. It's not the perfect transition, but we'll be able to smooth some of that out later. Here I've applied thin layers of two-part resin epoxy to both the bit of ear that broke off and the base of the earlobe that we still have on the figure. I'm applying a bit of the resin epoxy to the outside of the crack on the ear as well. Once that's done, I just had to hold this handsome devil's ear together for a little bit. I use a bit more resin epoxy to try and smooth out the surface transition on the base of this character's horn. I use an inconspicuous part of the art doll to test out the color matching, and I have to tell you, this was a really hard shade of blue to try to match. Rather than obsessing about matching the exact tone of the paints, I went the path of least resistance and just tried to come up with something that was close to the color scheme I was already using. If you want to see how I go from repairing and painting this devil's head to making a finished illustration with it, you'll definitely want to stick around till the end. Once this broken ear is fully painted, you should hardly be able to tell that it was broken at all. Since I've already started painting, I couldn't help myself and had to go at a little bit more. There's some things I thought I could punch up on him. So here I am, darkening up along the Art Doll's Brow Ridge. I've had a sort of fascination with demons and devils for a long time. There's so much room for imagination when you're designing them. You can use different aspects of people or animals or beasts or anything like that and create this thing that's totally unique and your own. I guess my interest in demons came from things like being into fantasy and role-playing games, novels, horror movies, heavy metal music, and even mythology has lots of references to demons. I recently started reading Howl's Moving Castle, and looking at this character, I can't help but think of Calcifer now. Here I'm going to give the cheeks a bit of a contrast and then blend it down. Since around your mouth tends to get less sunlight, or I guess in this devil's case, hell light, I don't know. Is there a sun in hell? How does that work? Anyway, I figured that part should be duller, so I paled that out. Now that I have all these exaggerated zones of colors on this devil art doll, I'm going to go about trying to soften them and ease the transitions between each color area. Now I'm going to dull that tone down on the neck 
but bring up some highlights on the front of it. Here are some props that I've made for the photo shoot. They're made out of found objects, like hardware, wood, and even paper. I'm drawing a moon, some clouds, and some stars on a piece of illustration board that's going to make up the backdrop. Here I'm using acrylic paint with a lot of water added to it, so it'll just smoothly glide across the illustration board. This wet on wet technique will allow me to create a nice smooth gradient from dark to light on the skyline. Since I plan on blurring it out in the photography, the skyline doesn't have to be perfectly painted, it just has to get the idea of a night sky across. Now I'm cutting out the shape of the crescent moon. Whenever I'm cutting something out of a denser board, I find it way easier to make several passes over the cut than trying to press down really hard and cut it down in one pass. We'll use a power drill to create the shape of the stars. I use two different sized drill bits to create some variation. And here's our photography set. I set up a light behind the backdrop that's gonna shine through and create the effect of the moon and the starlight. As you can see, the devil art dolls are standing on stacked up wood. I was lucky enough to find these nice looking craggy, dry rotted pieces of wood that kind of looked like a cliff face. And at last, we have Diavolo Malvolo playing violin by the church in the pale moonlight, luring souls away, seducing them with his sweet siren song. If you'd like a print, I'll put a link to where you can get one in the description and pinned comment. If you want to join me in making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time, make believe!